Year 6. The Rule of Bremen This morning I found the mangled body of a fellow dwarf in the hills outside of the capital, surrounded by elephant tracks. I didn't think he'd be complaining, so I emptied out his pockets. I knew it was going to be a lucky day for me this morning, before the guards found me sleeping in the back of the warehouse and kicked me out. Not only was this guy loaded, but he had a piece of paper directing him to take charge of one of the colonies, some place named Boat Murdered. Whoever named that place must have a weird sense of humor. Well, I figured the place had never seen the guy's face, so I took the paper, and the money of course, and started following the directions on the piece of paper. I finally found the place. The directions led me through a hidden passage that looked strangely like an escape tunnel. It wasn't until I got inside and tried to find out who was in charge that I found out why. It seems that this place is under siege by a combined force of goblins and elephants, and the last ruler dug the tunnel to escape. Sounded like a good idea to me, but when I tried to open the door to the escape tunnel, the whole thing collapsed. Guess I'm in for the duration. Everything's in chaos here. No one can go outside because of the elephants and goblins. The dwarves kept acting like I should know what to do, so I told them to dig some fortifications we could shoot outside from. The other dwarves informed me, to my surprise, that the goblins had bows too. It was a frightening concept. It made me long for the escape tunnel. But I'd already noticed the other dwarves giving me skeptical looks, so I ordered them to do it anyway, said it would all work out. While I was working on excavating the tunnel this morning, a bunch of dwarves ran in. I panicked and tried to hide the tunnel, but they all grabbed me and ran for the main hall. I was beginning to regret my deception when I noticed everyone was cheering. Turns out the goblins all left. They probably got bored or something. Everyone else thought I'd known about it from the beginning, though, and now the fortifications were almost done, we were in a perfect position to deal with the elephants. Between the military and a ballista, we managed to kill some of the elephants and force the rest away from the fortress. I've declared today a national holiday. With the fortress safe, I finally got around to asking how much this job pays. All the other dwarves looked puzzled, and they finally explained to me that they don't use money, and that everyone just works together. There's no way I'm going to keep risking my life in a fortress surrounded by goblins and elephants, so I ordered the smiths to start minting coins and send the request to the capital for a bookkeeper. We've also sighted an elven caravan approaching. I wonder if they'll mind the fact that the entrance to our fortress is surrounded by the rotting bodies of elephants and dwarves. This is a moonstone bracelet. All crafts dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with moonstone and mahogany and encircled with bands of onyx, mandrel bone, and silver. This object menaces with spikes of jet. On the item is an image of a mandrel and a dog in moonstone. The dog is striking down the mandrel. On the item is an image of an elephant and a dwarf in rope reed. The elephant is making a plaintive gesture. The dwarf is laughing. On the item is an image of a cheese in clear glass. I commissioned this bracelet to honor our victory. Well, actually, I didn't so much commission it. When I went to visit the craftsman, he was babbling about dead cities and the awakening of the ancient gods or something. Also, I have no idea where these cheeses come in, but I'm not going to question it. In other news, I traded some stone trinkets to the elves for berries and cloth. It turns out that all the trade goods were out on the depot since no one could bring them back in, what with the elephants and all. I've taken steps to make sure the elephants never menace this fortress again. The others think I'm paranoid, but they're all fools. The elephants will return, and unless we're ready, they'll trample every last one of us to dust. A bookkeeper arrived from the capital, and already our people are beginning to hoard their precious coins. Of course, some can no longer afford rooms to sleep in, but this helpfully makes room for the most recent wave of immigrants which I was unable to prepare for due to the goblin and elephant siege. Disaster struck today when the brewers came to me and told me we were running out of spirits and there was nothing left to brew. Turns out I forgot to order the farms to start in the spring. This ruler stuff sure is complicated. Disaster has struck. Our scouts have reported a herd of elephants is approaching the fortress. Due to a lack of time and cages, only two of the cage traps have been reloaded. This manages to catch two elephants, but the rest make it through. 
Meanwhile, all the dwarves assigned to ballista duty think that this would be a great opportunity to eat, drink, or sleep. A ballista operator finally arrives on the scene, and we get our second unpleasant surprise. The ballistas are incredibly inaccurate, even at short range. Success at last! The ballista instantly kills an elephant and hurls the body back a good twenty feet. Successive ballista shots manage to kill another elephant, but then disaster strikes when a dwarf wanders in and gets killed by an elephant. All the other dwarves, seeing opportunity for new capitalistic riches, begin to rush towards the body and grab his valuable equipment. Remembering the stories I heard about my predecessor, I hurriedly order the outer door to be locked. But the door is stuck open! Sabotage! That elephant sympathizer! That traitor! That quizzling! That... That monarch? Butterfly? Apparently showing incredible coordination. A monarch butterfly flew into the door workings just before the time of the attack and jammed it open. With all the bodies and items left by the elephants, no one is doing such a low-priority task as cleaning up bug remains. Meanwhile, the ballista operators, seeing the riches beyond their carved fortifications, gleefully follow the crowd out the main door and into the elephant-choked tunnel. Assigning more dwarves to operate the ballistas depletes the remaining supply of arrows without effect. My Mark's dwarves run out of bolts, but there are still two elephants remaining. There's only one chance left. I activate the entire military and send them in a mass charge at the elephants. The recruits, minus all the drinking, eating, and sleeping, let out a mighty shout and charge. For the glory of boat murdered! No one can fault their bravery. Only their results. After consulting diagrams and schematics left by my predecessors, I think I've found a way to seal off the fortress. Pull the damn lever. Pulling the lever has entirely foreseeable consequences. Oh well, I think we were all going to die anyway. With the survivors all holed up outside the fortress, I begin organizing things to best effect. Without wood, I can't produce more ballista bolts, but the lava forges and smelters are able to produce a trickle of bronze bolts. I order as many dwarves as I can spare to arm themselves with crossbows and hope they can find some without going outside. Most of these dwarves think that this would be a perfect time to eat, drink, and sleep. Meanwhile, the elephants, bored without a steady stream of dwarves to kill, are slowly torturing a war dog that was stuck outside. After a few months of being pricked by whatever crossbow bolts I could forge, the two remaining elephants keel over and die of blood loss. Victory! I order the drawbridge lowered and dwarves stream out for their first breaths of fresh air in months. I immediately order a door placed on the entrance to stave off the elephant hordes. However, within a month, I become aware of another herd approaching. A single untrained Marks dwarf stands ready to defend the crossing, but I doubt he'll be enough. I wonder why no dwarf has put up the doors yet, or even cleared the equipment and refuse from the area. A quick inspection finds the problem. A huge number of tamed animals, combined with the narrow corridors, is causing a truly horrible traffic jam. I order the corridors widened, and as many animals as possible put into cages. Luckily, the elephant herd turns south and skips the fortress entirely. With the corridors beginning to be passable again, a dwarf manages to construct the door, blocking off the elephants forever. Kodor Seymour, Dawn United This is a marble amulet. All craft dwarfship is of the highest quality. It is decorated with marble and jet, and encircled with bands of horse leather, rope reed, and cave spider silk. This object menaces with spikes of horse leather. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in marble. The elephant is striking down the dwarf. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in marble. The elephant is striking down the dwarf. On the item is an image of a dwarf and a moonstone bracelet in turtle shell. The dwarf is raising the moonstone bracelet. On the item is an image of a buckler in Kapok. In the final days of summer, a mason creates a controversial work of art to express his feelings of frustration and guilt. I have him imprisoned for defeatism. Stark Raving Mad posted, 
Here, I've made an amulet of all the history I know. Look, it's an elephant slaughtering dwarves by the hundreds. You can really see the bones and gristle. If you check the back, there's a lovely rendering of a butterfly jamming the fortress doors open. Also, more elephants killing dwarves. Stark Raving Mad posted, One or two previous rulers died during my reign. Guess I should have documented that better, but it was kind of hard to keep track what with the ground to wash and dwarven blood and my panicked attempts not to permanently screw over the whole succession game. Bremen posted, Most of them are dead, yes. I'll try and give more concrete info on survivors at the end of my turn. Locus posted, Well, at least we're resting peacefully in our tombs. In spirit. Probably underneath elephant remains in the physical sense. Bremen posted, I ran out of coffins. Then, I ran out of designated graveyard space. Most of you are spending your eternal rest in the garbage dump. The fall caravan arrives, running right into a herd of elephants. The guards engage them for a bit, actually managed to take down two before all but one flee towards the fortress with various elephant-caused injuries. The elephants hang back and wait. They know the caravan has to come back over the bridge, and an elephant never forgets. Doran Dostobral, child, is taken by a fey mood. Ah, children grow up so fast these days. Apparently, during the confusion, an imp wanders into one of the traps in the forging area, and gets torn apart. The elephants get bored without any slaughtering going on and leave, just in time for the caravan to make its escape. A while after the caravan leaves, some new immigrants show up. These go a long way towards replacing our losses. Current population, 74. I draft most of them into the army and reorganize it into a mostly crossbow-armed force, with a few heavily armored sword dwarfs supplemented by the similarly armed town guard. Mandrills appear and head for the trade depot. I mobilize the army, but they're all busy sleeping and don't arrive in time to help. A mandrill has stolen a platinum ring. No! But what's this? Apparently a number of mandrills are still across the river and are unable to find a way across. Oh, it's time for revenge. A soldier reaches the far side of the river and fires his crossbow. A hit on the foot. Die, mandrills. Die. At last, revenge is ours. Doran Dusterball has begun a mysterious construction. Meanwhile, in the fortress, the child prodigy begins construction on a strange artifact. Rungok Bakban, Skunk Heater. This is an onyx toy boat. All craftsmanship is of the highest quality. It is studded with silver, decorated with onyx, jet, and cave lobster shell, and encircled with bands of rock crystal. This object menaces with spikes of turquoise and rose quartz. On the item is an image of dwarves and dwarves in turtle shell. The dwarves are speaking with the dwarves. On the item is an image of a dwarf and an elephant in cave lobster shell. The elephant is striking down the dwarf. Man, that kid needs counseling. Only winter is left. Somewhat of an anti-climax. It was a calm and uneventful winter. The new military trains hard at the archery range. I only have a few short months to hammer a collection of peasants into a disciplined and capable army. Inspiration is provided by the huge number of elephants loitering just outside the walls with blood in their eyes. Spring has arrived. Spring has come, and with its coming I've decided to retire and become leader of the armed forces. Memories of the great elephant slaughters haunt my dreams, and only with a crossbow will I ever find peace. Behold! The Defenders of Boat Murdered. Tourette Dog posted, Did my former ruler make it, or was he one of the lemmings who aided against the elephants? Bremen posted, You not only survive, but you've become an insanely leveled-out dwarf, legendary in two skills and every stat maxed out. I so wanted to draft you into the military as an uber-swords dwarf and steel plate, but I didn't want to get any more former rulers killed. 